Welcome to Crafty Chemist Designs. Today I have a great project for you. But first, please give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to this channel so that you are alerted every time I drop a new video. On to the project. We are making these never ending cards. Oops, upside down there. So excited, so, so excited. What you need is, um, I, I use two different colors. I use red and blue, um, and then six different pieces of patterned paper, and then some white daisy to you know do my stamping on. And I've been wanting to figure out how to do these never ending cards for so long. It's been on my Pinterest for probably a year or so, maybe even more than more than that. And I thought it was gonna be really hard, so I would have been putting it off. But then when I saw this paper in the catalog, this collection, I was like, this is perfect for this. Okay, okay, so this looks complicated. And you know, I've made it, and like I said, I am not sure how <laughs> this works technically. And I made it, so I I don't know. I don't know what to tell you. I'll show you how to make it. It is so easy. So, so easy. Um, so you'll be able to follow along and make this with me as we go. Okay? So, okay, let's get started. Now, I do have this, this card makes a six by six card. Okay, you can see this is six by six, right? Six by six. So... This would be extra to send in the mail, just FYI. So if you make this, this is better to make for somebody you're going to hand deliver it to or if you're going to a birthday party, something like this. There are directions on my blog for making an A2 size card. So this will fit in our A2 size envelopes. Okay, it's the same, the same idea. I made this one out of the gnome for winters, the gnomes for winter, for my winter baby. Her birthday's coming up next week, so I made this card. So it is possible to do it in an A2 size card, and, and the measurements are on my blog. But I will tell you, if I were you, I would make the six by six one first because all of the measurements are the same. In this one, your papers are cut and scored at, at different sizes, okay? So, you know, you might want to get familiar with the process with, the, with this one first. Okay, so I will, post, um, I will post a link to the blog for the measurements, but I will be telling you that. This one I want to start with because, like I said, the pa papers are the same size. The other one, um, you cut them differently and you score them differently. So it's a little bit more complicated. Okay, so let's start this. I am going to start with, you need two pieces of cardstock for the base. And like I said, I used two different colors. I used the Bluebird and uh, the Candy Apple. Okay. So let's get that, and we're going to cut those at six by six. Six by six. You can do them the same color if you want. In fact, on this one, on this card, um, I used the same paper. Okay. On this one, I did differently. Just I did them differently because I wanted to have in my head what I was doing, you know, when I constructed this. So that's where I did different papers. Okay, so there's my candy apple. And then here's Bluebird. And I love these colors. They're, they're primary colors and so bright. And what's great about that is I feel like it's good for male, female, young and old. Anybody, anybody can um, do this. You use this. Okay, so you've got your two papers that are six by six. Um, 
Now we're going to score these, okay? So I'm gonna get out my scoreboard. Or you can get out your scoring blade on your, let me move this over. Shoot, this is like on top of here, so for some reason. Or you can, um, like I said, get out your scoring blade on your Fiskars. Okay, and now we are going to score at one and a half and four and a half. Or you can just turn this around and do one and a half again. You just need to score one and a half on each side. Did I score one and a half on this side? Let me make sure. Yeah, okay. So uh, I scored at one and a half on each side. And do that for both of these. One and a half, and then four and a half, or you can flip it and do one and a half. Okay, so we did that. Now we're going to fold these in to the center. So basically we're making a gate fold card. Okay, and you can use your bone folder and burnish it. The one thing that I would say is make sure that they don't overlap. You know, so make sure, like if these are gonna overlap at all, try and refold it or, because if they overlap, when you start turning them, now, it'll work, but it, um, they kind of, we'll do this. You know what I mean? It'll be harder to, harder to turn. Okay. So now we have two gatefold cards. Okay. Now we are going to cut these in half. So keep them folded. And remember, these are six, six inches. So... We're going to turn it as when it's folded with the gate fold on the outside and cut it at three inches. Okay, so you should have two smaller like gate fold cards. Okay, let me do that again. Here's my gate fold card that I made. I'm going to stick it in here with the six inches, right, going this way, and I'm going to cut it at three inches. Okay, now here's where the magic happens. Take one set. I'm going to take my red pieces, my candy apple, and I'm going to put them down like this. So if you look at if you look at this, you see this is my red. I'm putting it down like this. Okay. And then take your blue pieces and put them on the side. Okay. Now on mine, right now, I've got my red pieces with the gatefold going down. And I've got the blue pieces with the gatefold going up. You'll find if you make more than one of these, if you just, if you put them in a slightly different way, like if I had put these like this, you're going to get a little bit different orientations of these. So, okay. Okay, so now we're going to adhere them. And how we adhere is we're only going to adhere in this top left corner, the bottom left corner, the top right corner, and the bottom right corner. I am going to use score tape. I'm going to use score tape because I've been playing with this, you know, so much. It's going to be flipped around so many times that I wanted it to be sturdy. 
but you can use um, regular adhesive if you want to. I'm just trying to make sure that it's doubly safe. Okay, so pick up the top one that's going horizontal, and I'm putting adhesive just right here at the top from the score line to the edge. Okay? From the score line to the edge. Okay, you see where I put that? So if you're using just regular adhesive, just, you know, put a, a line there. And now I'm going to put it down here, just from this part, the bottom edge. Let me know if that doesn't make sense. We're just doing the four corners. Okay, not the, not the bottom here, the top left of the top piece and the bottom left of the bottom piece. And then the same thing on this side. Okay, the top right on the top piece and the bottom right on the bottom piece. I just cut into my paper, that's not good. Okay. Okay, so now what we're going to do is um, place these that are to the side on top. So on top. So how this works is these pieces are horizontal and the ones you put on top are going vertical. Okay, that's the important thing. Okay. So, I'm going to take the adhesive off of this one and adhere this to here. Line up the corner like that, okay? So, it's only, be, it's only being adhered by, by that, that piece, okay? Now, we're going to take the adhesive off of this one and line, line this up. like that okay okay now on this one we're going to take the tape off of here and I'm going to adhere this beside it just in this corner okay line it up and again this is where you want to try and make sure that these don't overlap because they won't they won't uh, fold quite as nicely. Okay, then the last one, we're going to take this one off. There we go. And adhere it here in the corner. Okay, there we go. Okay, so now you can, now you should be able to start to see that these are you're going to be able to start the never any process. So do each fold and then go over it with your bone folder to make sure that it, it folds nicely. Right? You see it's, so it's starting to fold really nicely. So work it all in, okay? So if we match these up here now, this is how it is. So these should be so we open it, the red showing, if we open it, the blue showing, if we open it. The red showing again. Okay. It's sort of upside down from how I had it. Okay.
Okay. So now we're just going to decorate it. So what you need to decorate is um, you need six pieces. So this is how I did it. Six pieces of patterned paper here. And these are two and three fourths by two and three fourths because these squares are three by three. So I made these two and three fourths by two and three fourths. So here's my paper. So let's cut these. I will give you a hint that it's better if they are somewhat non-directional. Then you don't have to worry about the orientation. Okay, so here's two that are two and three-fourths by two and three-fourths. This one is directional, so and so is the yay. So we'll be careful with those. But if you have something that just sort of has like an overall pattern and not a directional pattern, I would do that. Two and three fourths. And two and three fourths. Okay, so that's four. Okay, and then I need two more. So two and three fourths. By two and three fourths. Okay, so that's six pieces. Six different. You could make them all the same if you, you know, if you really wanted to. But I have six pieces that are um, different pattern. And then I also, I have two pieces that are white daisy there where I stamp the happy birthday or whatever sentiment you want to use. And then one that I used for signing. And I also added some balloons on that one. Or you can write your note or whatever you want. Okay, so I'm going to cut two pieces of white daisy. that are two and three fourths by two and three fourths. Okay. Okay. Okay, so I'll stamp on those in a minute. Here's a couple things I want to talk about before we adhere these. Um, there is one part, okay, so you see this orientation right here where there's these two flaps that are partially covering up these blocks that are three by three. Okay. So you can see that you don't, you don't see the bottom part of this one and you don't see the top part of this one. So if you have paper that has something like, I don't know, a bear on it. Like, I don't know, I have this bear sitting right next to me, so I'm just going to use this one. So say you have this bear here, you know, part of him is going to be covered up down here. And part of, like, if you had the bear on this piece his head would be covered up by these pieces. So when you put these down, I would put ones down that it doesn't matter if it's covered up, okay? If that makes sense. So you just wanna think about it. So what I'm going to suggest to you is Let's adhere these just a little bit. Put a little bit of uh, adhesive onto the papers. 
and then um, do all of the orientations and see if you like it that way, okay? You don't want to get it all adhered really, really stuck down on the paper and then realize, oh, I don't like which direction I put that paper, okay? Okay, so let's do these ones. Let's stamp the white ones here. And for this happy birthday, I am using... I'm using uh, this Jossum birthday because I like the size of the happy birthday. Okay, so happy birthday. You can use whatever, whatever stamps here. Like I said, I didn't, I didn't purchase the Let's Party set and I'm regretting it at this point. I might get it in my next order. Okay, so let's see, let's line these up. It's getting very sticky on my hands. There we go. Okay. And I'm, I use black. I'm going to use intense black because I did color these in with marker but um, if you're going to use colored pencil or you can use a different um, a different color if you want. I won't color these in right now because I want to try and finish the card first and then if there's time I'll color it in for you. Okay. Intense black and me are not the best of friends but Okay, there we go. Happy birthday. Put these guys back. And then the, the presents came from this set, the seasonal haul. So these are, I think they're supposed to be Christmas presents, but one thing that I will warn you about, um, I would not use dimensional things here. Like for instance, I would not, I would not put acrylic shapes or, um, I even probably wouldn't stamp something and cut it out and then glue it down on here. Just because if you have any kind of um, thickness, it might interfere with how this works. So I just would avoid that. You could play around and do whatever you want, but my inclination would be to not, to not do that. Okay. There's the presents. I love these presents. And like I said, I think they're Christmas presents. But um, I covered them in like birthday, so I don't think it matters. Okay, so I got that one done. And now I'm going to do this one where I sign the card. And then I searched through my stamps for balloons and I found these balloons. This is called Party Time Gathering Business Builder. So this is probably this is a really old one because it's got it's got a um snap on it. So I'm gonna do these in I'm gonna do this in Bluebird to match. I thought about doing red, but since I was putting it on the red cardstock, I thought, let's do the blue instead. Put my foam underneath it so that I get a nice good stamp on it. Okay. There we go. Looks good. I'm going to kind of do it up in the top corner because I want room to be able to sign. There we go. Clean this off. And then lastly, we, I just need to do these little strings. I'm 
to change my block. So I went this this one is so Okay, there we go. Okay. Going back to black. You could use stickers on these or something um, if you wanted to. This one's gonna go over. Just let me. Okay. Okay, so we're done stamping. And again, this is where I'm going to sign it. Now we can adhere everything and on, for these I am just going to adhere with regular adhesive. I'm going to use this as my sample and make sure it's going the same, oops, the same directions. Okay, so I've got this like this. Okay, here we go. Okay, so I've got the red going across at the top facing up and I've got the blue facing down okay so I'm going to put this one here and like I said I'm going to let's just adhere I'm just going to put a little bit in the middle just to make sure that we like it how it is I'm going to put yay there then I'll go back and, okay, so that's because, believe me, when you do this, depending on how you put these together, you end up with different configurations, and sometimes things can look upside down. Okay, so on this one, this is a case where I want to put papers here on the back that are okay being covered. And so here I'm going to put this one and um, maybe this one. Okay. I think this one's going to be okay, but let's just do it just to make sure. Make sure nothing's upside down. Because I have done them where I had to turn one around the other way so it wasn't upside down. Okay. Okay. So now this one, now we're going to put these ones, and these are the ones that will be, are covered up. So I'm going to put like these two, because it's okay. Nothing's going to be covered up if, right, if those are in the bulk place. Okay, now I've got one more. So I'm going to put this here. And the birthday, the birthday here. Okay, so let's make sure this is going to be, everything's going to be right side up. Okay. Okay. Yes. Yes. See, I want to pay attention to these. Perfect. Okay, now we can adhere these down all the way. So now I'm going to do my... So, Good adhesive all the way around. Get these on here. And make sure when you're putting these squares on that you don't um, cover up the folds. But have you seen so far how easy it was? Like, there's really no trick to making these. Um... I just, I, in my mind, I can't figure out how it's possible that it's this never-ending design. <laughs> I think it has 
has to do with the fact that they're only adhered in the corners. And so it allows you to manipulate them in all those different directions, but Uh, so, uh, Diana, did you see that the, these presents were from this one, Seasonal Hall? And the reason I like these ones is because it left room. I could fit both Happy Birthday and then the presents. I thought about putting a big present right there. You could do that too. Okay, so these two are adhered down. Let's see. Okay, these ones need adhered down. And we're almost there, guys. I mean, wasn't that, wasn't that pretty easy? And Really, you can do this with a variety of sizes. You you can make this bigger. You could use a 12 by 12. I should try that. Do a 12 by 12. The measurements will be obviously a little bit different, but you could make a 12 by 12 version of this. Wouldn't that be fun? You know what? That would be so fun for Valentine's Day. Give, give your significant other... This beautiful 12 by 12 never ending card with a big box of, you know, heart chocolate. So cute. You just have to come up with the, you know, the measurements. Okay, I think that's all of them, right? I think we adhered everything down. Yeah, okay. So yeah, we've got it pretty good. Okay, now we've just got to do these pieces. So here I'm using other colors from the collection. This is Jade and Sundance. Okay, so here's some Jade and Sundance. I just got some scraps out. Okay, these pieces here, these bigger pieces, you need four of each. So I've got two Sundance here, and two Sundance here, and two Jade here, and two Jade here. Oh, look at that. I broke my nail somewhere. Sorry. Okay, these, these are two and three-fourths by one and a fourth. Okay. Two and three fourths by one and a fourth. Let's see if these are two and three fourths. Okay, two and three fourths by one and a fourth. And you need four of them. So that's the Sundance. Let's do the same thing for the Jade. There's a Jade. Two and three fourths by one and a fourth. We need four of these. I would use something that's different, obviously, than the colors that you use for the base. Right, I used um, Bluebird and Candy Apple, so now I'm using Sundance and Jade. Okay. So let's get these on here. And remember, our paper is two-sided, so make sure all of them are on, you put them all on the same side. You know, you're using either all the true darker side or all true the lighter side okay so here's Sundance and, and I'm just 
putting them centered in that square. Okay, and then this is the jade. So let's put these two here. Put one here. Okay. And then on this one, we're going to do the jade. Here in the corners. I I just love these fun colors of this collection. That's why I was like, I really need to make something special with this. And now I've got like three, three versions of this card. I have another one that I practiced with and um, ready to go. I could send them to my three nephews, but what would they think if I gave them all the same card? I'm not sure that would work, but. Okay. Now you can see this card I did a little bit differently than my sample card. This one has the yay here, and my original had the confetti, and that's because in this orientation, not that it really mattered, but I didn't like how the words were covered up, right? So I wanted this one to be there so nothing was covered up. And you could see the whole yay, if that makes sense. Okay, that's why they're slightly different. Okay, now, now we need to do these small, these small squares. So there's four here, and then there's four here, okay? And those squares are one and a quarter by one and a quarter. Okay. So I'm going to use the same colors. So I need four of each at one and a quarter. So one. Two, three, four. Four jade. Let's see if I have enough on this piece here. One and a quarter. I think I do. I'm just, I try to use up my scraps here. One and a quarter, one and a quarter. One and a quarter. Now you could, if you wanted to, make these um, pattern paper. There's really no reason why these have to be uh, cardstock. Okay, so let's do this one. Um, so. Put the Sundance here and a Sundance here. Again, make sure you're using the same side of our papers. I'm using all of the true darker sides. And then two of the jade. I love the new color jade. Jade is new. It's somewhat like clover, but it's a little bit deeper. I don't know. I like it. I like it a lot.
Okay, and now let's see. There's one more orientation that needs, here we go. And these ones need the colors. The Sundance. The Sundance, and you can see we're, we're, we're done. I told you it was super easy to do these. They look so complicated, but they're not. And I'm just putting that in the center. And on that one, I don't like how I centered it, but it's okay. Okay. So, I mean, basically we are done. I just need to color these in. So I will color these in. You guys can ask me some questions um, about it. I'm going to use the colored pencils. I'll start off with the, this one. The Bright and Vivid um, has most of the primary colors in it. So I'm going to be using that. So go ahead and ask. And I'm going to try and do this fast. I did this a little bit. Um, I took more time when I did my sample, but since I'm live, I'm just going to try and do this kind of fast. Do you have any questions about this? Like I said, there are, um, directions to make the A2 size on my blog because I know, I know some people like, um, Julie likes to do A2 size cards. So there, that is possible. Okay, this is um, fiery red. And mine is, mine is obviously smaller because I use this to make my poinsettia cards for Christmas. And I made a lot of cards. Um, it's it's probably easier to color these before you put them on the card because right now I'm at I can feel the this crease here, but I do want to take the time during the live in case you know the time ran out. This is fern green. I'll just go ahead and use this one because it's in the pack. And you could do this with any, I mean, this doesn't have to be a birthday card, obviously. Um, I did birthday because this paper, I feel, lends itself to birthday. But you could do a thinking of you or get well or something like that. Believe me, when you make the first one and then you, you go to make another one, if you put these in any sort of different orientation, don't be surprised. Um, like if you if you put these together in the, you know how at the beginning of the red I made sort of facing down with the, the gatefold going down. If you make the gatefold going up, you're going to get a slightly different orientation of how these these fold. I was surprised by that. So that's why I really tried to make it s similar to what I did before so that they matched up and it wasn't confusing for you. But okay, I think that's it for this. Okay, I think that's everything. I don't think I need to 
color anything else in. I can sign my name here. Okay. away. Um, I, this one I did with markers. This one I'm doing with covered pencils. I'll put a link to the covered pencils. Okay, these are the colored pencils that I um, used. Uh, like I said, the directions are on the blog, so you can you can follow along on on the blog for the measurements and things if you didn't get it written down. And there are also, like I said, um, directions for the A2. I'll see. I'll see that. See how she's she's different. Okay. I like this little deer here and the little snowman. I kind of fussy cut it so you could you could see those. Um, so if you're only into A2 cards, you can you can use this one. But these are one size, these are one size, and then these are a different size. Um, and these are this one is scored at like one and I think one sixteenth. This one, and then this one was scored, was scored here at, a, I don't remember exactly what it is, one and one and three fours or something. Um, so it's a little more complicated, but it's possible to do it. So see you later. Bye. Thank you for watching this video. I have a Facebook business page, Crafty Chemist Designs, where I go live every Sunday at 4 p.m. Central Time to do demos. I have a Facebook VIP group, The Crafty Chemist Presents. You can share your artwork, ask questions. And I have an Instagram and TikTok, Crafty Chemist Designs, where I post um, artwork every day. And I have a blog, periodicallycrafty.blogspot.com.